helps me fill your mind with spooky, true crime stories of the deranged, unhinged, and absolute pure evil murders that will blow your mind. Some places you will visit to show you around and educate you on the history. Other times we will bring you to the paranormal because the dead never lie silent for too long. It'll be the last time anybody sees us alive. I don't know where she has us, but we're gonna get something killed. Hello? Gina, there is a beehive over there. Do you see that in the hole? Buckle up, Buttercup. Welcome to 50 States of Man. Welcome to 50 States of Madness. Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes. Here for another week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to do a shoot the shit today. Yeah, we're just going to kind of talk about a case that's um, making the news because of the sentencing is today. Yeah, this was um, a friend of mine, Megan, had reached out to me and asked me if I had seen this. On It's on Peacock. Yeah. And, and I said, no, I never even heard of it. And so I watched it and was completely, I was just flabbergasted at, at what was going on. I'm not a big TikTok person, so I'm not, um, it's called the TikTok murders. Hold on. It's called the TikTok murders. Is that what it's called? Uh-huh. The TikTok murders. Okay. It's on Peacock. Yeah. Um, it's produced by 50 Cent. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. So I think it was done really well. No, it was. And I'm actually surprised because I used to watch TikTok a lot, especially yeah. during the pandemic. Yeah. And I guess that's when they hit their, you know, height yeah. of popularity was kind of during that time, even though they were on it a little bit before. And mm-hmm. then it was a couple that was on there. And I had nothing. I, I used to watch the guy's videos. Yeah, that's what you said. So. I mean, I didn't follow him, but, you know, when they would pop up, pop up I, yeah. I'd watch it because he did a lot of impersonations of yeah. Scarface and Nicolas Cage and Yeah, he, it sounds like actors. He, that he really wanted, this guy really wanted to be an actor. Um, his name, what, well, his uh, name on TikTok was Jin Kid. Jin Kid, yeah. J-I-N-N-K-I-D. Like, I'll try to pronounce his, his name correctly, but it's His name's Ali. Ali and a, then a, a, I, Abu Laban. Sure. Abu Laban. Okay. A B U L A B A N. Abu Laban. We're just going to call him Ollie for right now. Or Jin Kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, it's just crazy because, I mean, I guess after COVID and I started going back to work and stuff, I wasn't on TikTok as much. But I would think that this, I don't know, I just, I don't remember this case or this ever happening. Back and so he was married to, he got married. Yeah, her name was Anna. Anna, and I wanted to try to find her last name, <clears throat> her maiden last name, but she was stunning. She was very beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah, like like model gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know her name before she got married because they just keep referring her to Anna Abulaban. Yeah. So I'm um, sure they said it, but yeah. So basically, it sounds like they knew each other for years well yeah they met each other on an air force base because yeah. he w- he went into the military right and he got stationed in okinawa japan and it's a small little tight-knit community of military right people and her father was stationed there yeah and they're originally from the philippines mm-hmm. and he met anna there yeah and and they just Sounds like they, I mean, if you see like their pictures, which again, you know, you, you can look at people's Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or Twitter, whatever. And, you know, a lot of people portray this wonderful life and they only show the good moments. But, you know, in this, in this uh, movie or this documentary, the, a lot of her friends have said like this whole time she's been crying out for help. Yeah, like for years, I guess they've known that they've had struggles because he's really super jealous. They ended up getting married. Well, what ended up happening is that her family, they, you know, her father got sent back to the Philippines. So she went back to the Philippines. He stayed at the base. Yeah. And then she found out she was pregnant after mm-hmm. she returned to the Philippines. So and if, he was in Virginia. He, and then he got stationed in Virginia. Well, no, I think he got kicked out. Kicked he got out. discharged. He got, yeah. 
for getting in a fight. Yeah, so according to the documentary, which is what I thought happened, well, what it says on the documentary yeah. is that he got into a bar fight and was discharged, but Shannon just found right now in watching some some clips from court TV is that he actually was discharged for hitting Anna. Punching her in the face. Yeah. Well, that was one of the questions because the mom was getting... In, um, not interviewed. What's that called when they're examined, cross examining? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know they were. She was up on the witness stand, and they were talking about the history of their fights, and you know how he confided in his mom that he would punch Anna, right? And how they would fight, and so they asked, you know, were you aware that he got discharged from the military for punching Anna in the face? And that was one of the questions, and she said no. So I don't know, you know, it could have been the bar fight. It, it, she might have been punched in the face during the bar fight. Who knows? So, I mean, and it could have been just everything. Oh, just a whole, yeah. It, it kind of just sounds like he was a pretty violent person, but yeah, kind of kept it secret and yeah. only the people close to him knew. Um, he had a temper. That's yeah, for sure. he had a temper. He was very jealous. And like I said before, she was absolutely beautiful. And so she had not as big a following as him, but she had, you know, yeah. pride, he was like in the millions and millions and millions of followers yeah. and subscribers. Um, because he he's, I mean, looking at his things, like he did really good impersonations and he was funny. He was very much into... Um, video games and stuff like that like recreating them that i think that's how he got popular yeah. some skyrim impersonations where he'd walk around and um do uh, impersonations of the characters on yeah the video game. and i and think so, one of those went viral and then it just kind of took yeah. off from there and he just well she would help him out with that but i think um prior to to him doing the videos she eventually got to virginia with him because she was pregnant she applied for a visa because of the baby and it took she found when she by the time she found out she was pregnant they didn't get over here till the baby was nine months nine months old so it took a long time it takes a long time for those visas to come through it took a long time and so it seemed like everything was wonderful. It seemed like they were, you know, living a good life, but apparently that wasn't the case. Yeah, it went back as far back as Virginia when she first started coming yeah. over, I guess, his temper, because she would get a lot of attention. I mean, she was gorgeous mm-hmm. and she would get a lot of attention and he didn't like that. And he tried to control her and it was easier to control her because she had no family in Virginia. It was yes. just his family. She had no friends. She did have a large network of friends, but they were all attached to the military base because right. of her traveling, you know, to Okinawa. So she had met a, quite a few friends. Yeah. And at one point, he allowed her. So frustrating yeah. sometimes when yeah. you hear stuff like that. Yes. It's, it hits a nerve. Um, he allowed her to go visit her friends in San Diego at one point. And at this point, he's making some videos, you know. He's, yeah. He's getting popular. Yeah, because, I mean, clearly he was doing really well because their their apartment that they lived in. In San Diego? It was beautiful. <laughs> beautiful, yeah. After she went to San Diego, she talked him into moving out there because that's where she had her friends. Yeah. She said, we did the Virginia thing with your family now. And he saw it as an opportunity, though, too, because I don't oh, think he would have gone. He wouldn't. He if wouldn't. He didn't see this no. as his opportunity. Yeah, for yeah. sure. He thought, oh, I'll be closer to LA. I'll get interviews. I'll, you know. Yeah, because his, I think his end goal was that he wanted to be an actor. Yeah, he was going to be famous. Yeah. But he was very popular. He, when he was in Virginia, he got like a content creator mm-hmm. manager. We don't have that <laughs> yet. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like trouble at this point. I know. I was like, but um, yeah, they have a, he had a content creator who helped him get spiral. Like, cause I guess when they reached out to him, he had like in hundreds of thousands of yeah. subscribers at that point, probably about 200,000 subscribers. But after he got the content creator, it was in the millions. Yeah. He started, that's when he started yeah. racking up the, the views and the, yeah. And I'm sure that's when he really started to, you know, make money and, And I'm sure that went straight to his head and was like, okay, like, you know, here we go. And she started 
getting a following too. Yes. And so she started becoming more popular when she went out to San Diego because now she had her friends. Yes. And her friends are all gorgeous too. Yes. And they're all doing these TikToks together and beautiful women going out on the town. You know, mm-hmm. of course, they're getting the attention. She's getting the views and he starts getting more and more jealous and starts trying to control her more and more. Yeah. It, so it, um, and the crazy part to me is like, this guy literally documented everything. Yeah. He recorded everything like I don't know if that comes with being an influencer and being on he was on YouTube also yeah so I don't know if this comes from you just get used to I mean he didn't do like a podcast like we do he was it sounds like he just kind of recorded his daily life and you get used to doing that stuff so yeah I don't I don't know how that happens you just automatically think like oh I gotta record this oh I gotta record yeah. this but he recorded their fights he recorded everything. Their, literally everything that happened but it wasn't even like a fair like to her she's just ignoring like mm-hmm. but he's just berating her and going after her it's such it's just, it was almost like you saw him trying to get a rise out of her of course that's what he was trying to yeah. do yeah like I am f-ing the best man you ever met, and you're the dumbest f-ing I ever f-ing devoted my life to. You are the dumbest. F-ing. I wish we never had a kid together because of how f-ing stupid you are. She sees the value in me, unlike your dumb. F-ing. And uh, I can't wait to divorce you so I can start my new life. At one like point, he would just record and just. He start wanted her reaction. Her reaction and start, and she would just sit there and ignore him. So he could say, "Look what she said. Look what yeah. she did. She's the crazy one. Mm-hmm. She's the one who's you know, but." And as soon and and it's funny because as quickly as he could turn it on, he could turn it off. Yeah, because he would get all amped up and start screaming and yelling, and then in the next breath, like "I'm sorry, baby, I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. mean that." And he clearly, yeah. I feel like it was kind of like an obsession with her. Oh yeah, and he basically did not want her to get any attention. He didn't want people to talk to her about her comment nothing yeah if it, yeah even talked about a time that they went out for her birthday mm-hmm. and it wasn't about him so he just you know they went to disneyland mm-hmm. with the kids and her friends and their friends kids having a good time and he was just mr miserable that he ended up going out to the jeep and sleeping yep like it's just yeah because everything had he had to be the sole focus i think of everything yeah. and if he wasn't then he was like Eeyore, you know, yeah. like I'm going to be down in the dumps. And I think when he's trying to get her attention and her reaction, it's because she's not reacting. It just started escalating. Oh, yeah. Escalating. Of course. Like the he, I mean, in the names he would call her like. No, it was terrible. Just, it yeah. was it was really, really bad. And they um, were married for seven years. Mm-hmm. And she was enduring this for seven years. In front of a child. Yes. They had a daughter. In front of yeah. a child. So. Um, I'm trying to think of the little girl's name. Amira. Amira. Yeah. And so, you know, this poor little girl was exposed to all of this. Oh, yeah. Um, the screaming and the yelling and who knows what she saw. Yeah. You oh, know, of course. I mean, and there's, there's pictures of Anna where he had hit her and, um, you know, she had a black eye and her face was bruised and so it just kind of got it just con- continued to escalate i think when he came out to san diego and he didn't have his family there i think it just got worse mm-hmm. because she had her friends and she mm-hmm. had an outlet and she was able to go and do yeah. things on her own and i don't think he liked that no because one day she was out with her friend and they both come back to the apartment because they're going to pick up Amira, mm-hmm. and he grabs her, takes her into the room, and starts yelling and throwing things with the friend there. Mm-hmm. At that point, you know it's bad when they're doing it. Just in front don't of even care mm-hmm. who's there. And just berating her. And she ended up grabbing her daughter and leaving that day. And she's called out to family members of his. I guess he had a cousin that lived over here, and she needed a ride yeah. at one point, too, for him to... For the cousin, for him to come pick her up and drop her off. At yeah, and, house. and there's just 
um, his cousin is also in this documentary. Yeah, and talks about it. And yeah. it sounds almost like they were really super close, but at the end, you knew he just was not on his side. Oh, yeah. No, no. of course not. I mean, how can you be? It's, um, this guy is like... Well, we haven't even said what he did. Yeah. Like he, and this guy is like narcissistic beyond, like textbook. Yes. Um, and it just, I feel like... You know, this happens a lot, more than people want to believe. But I feel bad for the friends because they knew that it wasn't a good situation. And then when something like this happens, it's hard to say after the fact, like, I should have done this. I should have done that. And I feel like that's a guilt that they're going to have to live with for the rest of their life. And that's so yeah. but I terrible. Do, I do have to say that the friend that w- there was one friend that was in the documentary and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember their names, but there was one friend, the one that went with her to the, ho- to the apartment and saw him yelling and berating her who lived in San Diego. Cause she had another really close friend who lived in the Philippines that mm-hmm. would come and visit her. But she has this one friend who, uh, she took her in. She yeah. was living with her. And it was him tricking her. Ali tricked Anna to come back to the apartment. Yeah. Because he said, I'll get a hotel room. Because at this point, she decided she wasn't coming back. Yeah. He knew he wasn't getting her back. There was no chance. So he decided, I'm going, you come to the apartment. You live in the apartment with our daughter. And I'll go get a hotel room. And so she thought, oh, okay, good. This is going to work. And all her friends warned her of his violence. Yeah. And she was like, he would never do anything to hurt me. He would never do anything to hurt our daughter. He would never do anything yeah. to hurt us. And he would just, accusation after accusation, oh, yeah. thrown at this poor girl about cheating. Mm-hmm. But he was the one who was the big cheater. Yeah, well, that's yeah. usually how it works. How it does. <laughs> that's how it that's works. That's usually how, like, the accuser is usually the one doing it because they know they how know what easy they're doing. it is. Yeah, how they know what they're doing. Of course. Yeah, of course. so even with her going out with her friends, oh, she's out screwing some guys. Mm-hmm. She's out there. Yeah, know, that was constantly, around. like, what he just, he wouldn't let let down from that. It was yeah. just constantly, constantly. And it and the stuff that he would say, like, I can't even imagine another man touching my wife or another man, like, it yeah. would just infuriate him, like, oh, where yeah. he would become, like, rageful. Yeah. It, it was... The thought of it just threw him over the edge. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. constantly accuse her and call her names and a whore and just all these terrible stuff. For this poor lady, all she's doing is living her life and yeah. taking care of her daughter and yeah. her family. And yep. he just would and start And you can see her. her when he's recording these arguments. You see her. She's literally just sitting on the couch in a corner on her phone, just like scrolling through Instagram or just texting somebody. Like, she's literally doing nothing. She's not even, like, rarely would she respond to him. And when it was, it was just very something very short. Like, she yeah. wasn't really engaging with him. She wasn't saying anything back to him to try to get him amped up and escalate. Yeah. Like, it was just... Just like, he would ask, like, do you love me? She's like, no, I don't love you. Yeah. No, I she, don't love you. Like, how could she, though, at that point? Yeah, and exactly. He's live streaming mm-hmm. with people watching while he's sitting here... This is a bitch. This bitch. This bitch. She just wants me for my visa. She's like, send me back to the Philippines. I don't care. Yeah, at this get point. rid of me. Like, she's like, I don't care. Deport no. me back. I don't want to be here with you. Do what you got to do. She was done. She was like, I don't even need my visa. I don't care yeah. anymore. Like, you know, I'm, I don't care. Like, I'm just don't want to be in this relationship anymore. No. I don't know. I don't care what happens to me. I just don't want to be with you anymore. Yeah. It was, it was to that point. Yeah. And he knew she was done at that point. Yeah, and I think that's when he started to panic. Yeah. And, you know, it kind yeah. of took a twist. <laughs> and so she did have some really close friends. And one close friend was a guy named Ray. Rayburn. Yes. And Rayburn made a comment one time to Ollie saying, like, you know, you're a really lucky man to have Anna. You know, she's gorgeous. You have her. And from that point on, he hated that was it. him. That was it. He would not have anything to do with them. He just absolutely could not stand him. 
he would make comments like, oh, he wants you, you yeah. know, all this other stuff when he was just a friend to yeah, her. Yeah, he was her friend. He was her friend. And you know what? If it went to something more, who gives a crap? Look at how shitty she's Look, being I mean, treated by God. him. Yeah, Fucking, you can't blame the yeah, woman. Thank you. Go get somebody who's going to make you happy. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And she was telling him she didn't want to be married to him anymore. She didn't love him anymore. No. So at that point, the relationship was She wasn't leading over. him on. No, no. She wasn't, <laughs> she wasn't telling her husband one thing and sneaking off and doing another. And so after they were separated and she moves back into the apartment, he moves out to a hotel room. He starts to do some shady ass shit. Like, I couldn't even imagine doing that to Whose somebody. Whose mind goes in that direction. He took his daughter's iPad, put an app on it to listen to what happens in the apartment. He stuck it under the couch. Yeah. And so I guess on a day that she ended up coming to move back in, she left to go take her daughter to school. He made a copy of the key, which she did not know he had a copy oh. of. And he got back into the apartment and he thrashed it and then put that iPad under the couch yep. to hear who she'd be calling. Probably he thrashed it because he thought, oh, she'll call for help. Yeah. She'll ask somebody. Like for- ransack this apartment. Oh, like yeah. it was in complete shambles. Like yeah. everything was everywhere. <laughs> Broke things. And imagine you have your daughter coming back to that. What state yep. of mind do you have that you're going to allow exactly. your daughter to, to come see back that. to see that? Mm-hmm. So... I guess, you know, Anna comes back to the apartment and sees it. So she first calls her friend, the one who she had originally moved to, the female yes. friend. She calls her, tells her what's going on. She's like, you know, you need to get out of there. Like, yep. I, yeah, you know, you need to be careful. And again, Anna's like, well, you know, he's not going to do anything. He's not going to do anything. He won't hurt me. Yeah. And then, so then she makes a phone call to Rayburn. Mm-hmm. Ask him to come over to help. And, of course, he's a good friend. He comes over. And, I mean, even if he was something more. It doesn't matter at this point. At that point, they're separated. Yeah. Like, you're, we're done. Yeah. You're done. Like, yeah. And so Rayburn comes over to help her clean up the apartment. And there's Ollie listening to a man's voice. Yes. On this app and recording. On this app. I kind of think he asked for it. Like, well, why would you why would you get yourself into that? Like, if you have to be in a relationship where you're at that point in my the relationship, thing is, why it's do like, apps like this exist? Thank you. It's like, why are there things out here that exist like this? Like these you. these apps that allow you to change your phone number and call from a different number. And why do these things exist? Because it's only for shitty ass people. Exactly. It's not for anybody who's legit. If like, you're if you're on the up and up, you, you don't need any of that stuff. Yeah. So why do these things even exist? Why yeah, are they allowed even, to exist? I didn't even know there was an app out there that you can put on a device and have it continuously let you listen, listen. in. He was listening to their whole conversation, to everything. Yeah. Everything that was being said. So needless to say, he wants to go down there and confront them. Mm-hmm. With a gun. And he does. <laughs> yes, he does. I just, I can't, I, it blows my mind because he records everything. Yep, everything is recorded. Um, he ends up shooting them both. And you can hear it. Yeah, you hear everything. As soon as he walks in, you hear, um, you hear the gunshots. You hear her yell. You hear the guy. You hear everything. And then you hear him calling her name. After he shoots her. After he shoots her. I just... Um, and then he walks out into the hallway and calls his mother. Yeah, and there's video of it. Yes. Like, it's, it's caught on, on the surveillance. Yeah, yeah, it's a, on, on a the, neighbor's ring cam. Yeah. calls her and he confesses Mm -hmm. he tells his mom i just killed i just killed her and on the documentary it talks about that but when you see the cross-examination of the mother on the witness stand on the court tv Mm -hmm. um tiktok app they actually talk about he actually she goes i don't believe you you're lying don't play like that and he sent her pictures pictures of why, Anna why did he and even Ray take Burn. pictures? Like, 
<laughs> dead. Who goes them? back in there and takes a picture <sighs> after you murder your mm-hmm. wife and her well, friend? Clearly, he's a sick. He's a sick. Um, 21st, uh, you received a phone call from Ali. Is that right? Yes. Um, and he called you um, after the shooting happened. Is that correct? Yes. Do you recall talking to him on the phone? I just recall saying, you know, that's not funny. That's that's not funny, Holly. Don't say that. That's not funny. And then I received the picture. I looked and I deleted it right away. And I hung up the phone. And I so the, and the mom deletes the photos right away. Yeah. I'm sorry. If I was the mom, I'd be freaking calling the cops. I, I know yeah, these I, are your kids. I know. But oh, yeah. No, I mean, and again, I have a granddaughter that he has at school that he's going to go pick up with this gun. Mm-hmm. I don't know his state of mind. I am calling he the just fucking killed these cops. Two people. Yeah. Thank you. I don't care how much I love my son. I love my grandkids more because my son is fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, that's how I would think. Mm-hmm. No, uh, it's, it's, um, I mean, and you have to put, try to put yourself, I mean, which is hard to put yourself in the mom's position too. Like, you don't know what you would do until you're in that position and hopefully no, none of us are ever in that position. Yeah. But I feel like I would call the cops immediately. I, thank you. Like immediately. I'm sorry. I'm getting, my son just told me he shot, sent me a picture. Like here's yeah. a fucking picture. But so he leaves to go pick up his daughter. And at the same time earlier in the day when she had seen, cause it kind of skipped when she had seen the mess, she had called that one friend who they were living with prior to because she said can you please pick up my daughter Amira from school because Amira um, I don't want her to see this mess and then I'll go pick her up from you so yeah. like, give me a chance to clean up all this mess can you pick her up from school today and she said sure so when she was driving to the school she sees Ali in his jeep and Amira getting into the jeep and starts driving off so she starts texting and calling her friend like what do you want me to do mm-hmm. Ali picked up Amira and she's not answering of course because Anna's dead she's dead and so she kept calling and calling and calling. So then, uh, I don't know, oh, a neighbor had called because mm-hmm. she heard they heard the gunshots. Heard the gunshots. Yeah. So the cops were already at the apartment. So by the time the friends started arriving, because they said something's wrong, she's yeah. not answering. By the time friends started arriving at the apartment, they see it all blocked off and they know. Of course. They know what happened. Years old, she was Filipino. Uh, police know her name, but they're not releasing it yet. Uh, no information has been released yet about the male victim. Uh, they were found shot to death in the living room. Police say it was the suspect who called 911 and he was arrested near the 805 and the 15 yesterday. Police tell us inside the car they found a weapon and the suspect's five-year-old. And, um, they end up pulling him over. They end up you know, sending out an APB. Did I say that right? ABP, APP? APB. APB. <laughs> on, um, and they end up pulling him over on the freeway. And he actually um, gets arrested without resisting arrest. But he tries to make it seem like it's a crime of passion. That of he course. didn't plan it. That it wasn't first degree murder. That's his defense. That was his defense. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, don't charge me with first degree mor- murder. This was a crime of passion. A crime of passion. I didn't realize how significantly lower of a sentence you would get Six in years. a crime of passion. Thank you. Six years. As opposed to life or death 25 penalty. 25 to like, life. Well, here, like, life, you know, in California, 25 to yeah. life in prison. But six years, and then you would probably serve half of that. Yeah, like three years in a crime of passion for two people's murders. Like, Uh first of all, what passion do you have towards Rayburn? So, okay, let's say it was a crime of passion towards Anna. What crime of passion do you have towards poor Rayburn? Like, like I don't know. No, it's ridiculous. When they when they flash that up on the screen, I thought, oh my god! Like, how do you? How is that even a real thing? Yeah, I just. I, I understand it's not premeditated in a crime of passion, but if you put a device under the sofa, you're recording, I'm sorry, and you come to was... the apartment with the gun, th- that's premeditated. You're coming yes. to the apartment with the gun. It's not that the gun was in the house nope. and you grabbed it. It's not that you grabbed a vase and knocked it over their no. heads. No. It's not like you threw them over the 35th floor of the building. Mm-hmm. Like, he literally had to go up 35 floors to their apartment. Yeah, they lived on the 35th floor. I mean... They were making money. Oh, yeah. No, this, this apartment was beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely breathtaking. So I just... The thing that that really got me that they showed um, afterwards is 
that a few weeks after, after they had like processed, you know, the scene and everything that the family and the friends were able to come back to the apartment to get her stuff. Yeah. And it was not cleaned. It, it was, was just like they had left just it. like they had left it. Well, I was surprised because we've covered other murders, and I was surprised to hear that it's the family's responsibility for the cleanup. That's yeah. why they have those cleanup services. I thought the crime scene cleaners. Yeah. Yes, they crime, have the crime, crime scene, scene cleaners. cleaners. Go see them. I I will give them a shout out. <laughs> but see, I always thought that the police department or you know th- yeah. they took care of that they sent people over they cleaned mm-hmm. up the mess or whatever no they leave it so so it was four months later it yeah. wasn't released until four months where the breakfast that they ate was that morning was still there there imagine the smell in that apartment you're walking and into. you can see like on because they were on the couch so she was shot on the couch and you could see the couch cushions like full of blood you could like, I think they said one thing was removed. Yeah, they had some, one of the couch things were yeah, removed. Yeah, was but removed. But other than that, everything was like it like yeah, it was. The bullet holes Every, still all on the walls. walls. Everything. Like, you come into that and you see, like, as a family member, seeing your daughter where she died or your sister or even just your best yeah. friend. Like, they, it sounded like these girls were really, really close. Like, yeah. these friends were really super close. Imagine. Like, yeah. I couldn't. Yeah, it, it would be, that would be very, very hard yeah. to do. To go in there um, and get her stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. So he, it went to trial and he was found guilty of first degree murder, which thank God, because. Oh, yeah. Um, but ironically, I didn't know till the end of the whole documentary that today that we are recording right now, June 28th, 28th. Um, is his sentencing. So yeah. his sentencing is going on today yeah i'm really curious so I we're, keep trying, we're to trying to actually f- find out what honest. his sentence is so hopefully before we get this edited and up for you guys next week that you know obviously it will be out and we can include yeah. that in but as of right now we have no 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 word on what his sentencing will be well i just want to mention his outburst in court and this is the preliminary oh, like God. where they decided they were they the, where they were trying to determine whether or not they you know they were of course they were going to charge him but it's a kind of like a preliminary yeah. type and there was i guess a detective that got on the stand and starts talking about um instagram messages that they found between her and rayburn and how they are speculating that they were having a relationship right um which who but, cares but to me i'm like you don't know that for sure. I mean, you know, you don't even know what stage of the relationship. And it was neither in. one of them are here with us anymore to yeah, defend themselves. To even so. say anything. So, but he was talking about this, and I guess, you know, Ollie didn't know about these Instagram messages that they were sharing with each other between Anna and Rayburn. Yeah. It was almost like he would have killed them all over again if they were standing there oh, yeah. in the courtroom. Oh, yeah. Like, he had 100%. no remorse for what he did. Nope. He was there, he said, after he killed her, that bitch. Yeah. In front of the judge. Yeah. That bitch. Yep. Like, this is someone you murdered. Uh-huh. And that's the reaction you're going to have. Yep. Instead of thinking, like, I should have just let her go. Child. Yeah, I should have just let her go. Like, you yeah. know, let her be happy. Like, if you are not a happy in a relationship or if they are not happy, let them be happy. Well, and she even said to him, like, I just want him to be happy. Yeah. I just, just go. Like, I'm not happy with you. I just want you to be happy. It's just yeah. not going to be with me. Yeah. That's it. The, any rational, normal that person. Yes. And he, even the judge had to say, you, like, sir, you need to calm down. Yeah. Like, because. And by this time. So he was like, I'm sorry, I should be getting mad. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Like, dude, you already killed her. Like, yeah, yeah, what she's, the fuck? Yeah, like, <laughs> she's, she's gone. She's gone. She's right? gone. Like, like, Don't worry about it. The, thank you. Like, but he literally. It was like he was reliving everything yeah, all over again. He would have killed her again if she was standing there in that courtroom. And, and he, he, he looked like a different person. He had grown his hair out. So in the beginning of the documentary, he has very short hair. Yeah. Um, like a buzz cut. And by the end of this this show, he's in court <clears throat> with shoulder length, curly hair. Like, pull, he looks like a totally different person. Yeah. Totally different person. Oh, gained weight. Gained weight. Oh, yeah. A for lot sure. of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, being in jail. But, yeah. And then um, they came to interview him mm-hmm. in jail. 
And even then, the um, no remorse, no like nothing. I'm sorry, I did this. It was ordered. He wasn't like, even he was, gonna pretend. No, <laughs> he was like, like almost as if she brought this on herself. She yep. deserved it. Like yeah. nobody was gonna. What do you wanted me to do? Nobody was gonna touch my wife. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I did it. Like, yeah, he didn't care. He he, he yeah. truthfully did not care. Did it, not care at all. Yeah, he just he. It's a, it's, it's he, a really, she, it was all her fault. What tragic, came to her? That's story. His, that was his take on it. Mm-hmm. It is her fault. Yeah. She did this to herself. She did it. Yeah. And I just, I, yeah, it gives you, super it sad. gives you like a really good glimpse into people who have mental illness Yeah, into, you know, their world how they think, how they react, and how they me, feel. I'm like, is narcissism really a mental illness? Like, I don't know. I'd like to find that out because I think he was just narcissistic. I think he just needed to be in control of everything. I don't think there was anything mentally wrong with him, like a diagnosis. Yeah. You know, I just think he literally needed to control everything, everything. around him. And maybe, maybe that is, maybe that's part of something. Maybe that's part yeah. of OCD. I don't know. Like, he. I mean, obviously, yeah. Of course, he had something, but like. When I think of mental illness, I think, oh, schizophrenia. Like, you know, things like, and I know depression and stuff, but I felt like he didn't suffer from some of those things. Yeah. So if there's like, if somebody knows like what it could be classic, is is narcissistic personality, is that a mental illness? I mean, maybe if it's something that has gone on for years, then it just gets worse as time goes on and they just start to develop other Things. Could, yeah, I don't know. A little bit of a psychosis of some sort. Oh, oh hey, Blue. He's my dog's making, in here with us. Apparently, he's... He's making noise. Yeah, he's saying He's that really upset, too. He said, yeah. Ollie's an ass. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You tell him, buddy. Thank you. Tell him, Bubs. Yeah, he would have bit his balls off. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, Blue's telling yeah. us to wrap it but up because I think you. he needs to go outside. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah. So, so thanks, thanks for joining yeah. us another week. Check out that episode on TikTok. Yeah. I mean, on Peacock. Yeah, it's on Peacock. The TikTok called Murders. The TikTok Murders, if you guys haven't. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of good stuff on yeah. on TV right now. There's We're a catching up on some things. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Case update. The former TikTok personality found guilty of two counts of first degree murder was scheduled to be sentenced Friday morning, June 28th. However, the defense attorney requested a continuance. Ali Abolaban faces a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole for murdering his wife, Anna Abolaban, and her friend Ray Barone back in October 2021. The jury reached a verdict May 29th after nearly a month-long trial. According to prosecutors, the continuance was requested by defense so they can hire a prison expert to prepare a bullabong for prison. The judge agreed to postpone sentencing until September 6th. Yeah, so... Um, or shoot the shits later. Yeah, definitely. We'll do... Yeah, let us know if you like these. Um, I know people have said that they they do like the shoot the shit episodes. Um yeah, so let us know if you guys have any suggestions on stuff we should watch. Um, thank you, Megan, for for uh, making the suggestion. Yeah, asking me to watch this. Yeah, and um, yeah, so we will be back next week. Bye, Bye guys.